home, good morning. I hope you're all well and I hope you're all safe. It really is good to be with you this morning. It's been a long time. When Paul asked me to do this, I have to be honest and say I was extremely nervous. I've not ever spoken to a camera really before. Um, I always managed to dodge it when they were doing things at church on videos and what have you. But I thought, do you know, the last 13 weeks have been extraordinary. We're living in extraordinary times. And we're doing things that we would never, ever have dreamed of us being able to do. And given this, I thought, you know, time to step up the plate and do something extraordinary. As I said, we've been, I've been in lockdown 13 weeks, which is a quarter of a year. It is a long time, but we've managed. I guess at the beginning, none of us could have envisaged how this was going to play out. How would we manage? Would we be able to get shopping? Would we be able to talk to our sons and daughters? Would we be able to see our extended family? How are we going to manage to keep in touch with everybody? How are we going to manage to keep in touch with our church family? And how will our relationship with God fare under all of this? I was reminded that whatever else is going on, whatever else is happening, we are a chosen people. We are a people of God. Romans 2 verses 4 to 6, and this is the message version, reminds us that we are part of a body and each part gets its meaning from the body, not the other way around. This body is about Christ's chosen people, Christ's body of chosen people. From this passage, I'd just like to share a few thoughts which I, I with you. God is constant. God is there with us always. He never leaves us alone. He's always there in the background, in the midst of us. He's always there supporting us. God is community. We are all an integral part of the body of Christ. And God expects us to contribute. We all need to pay our, play our part. In the message version of Romans 12, 1 to 2, it said, So here's what I want you to do. God helping you take your everyday ordinary life. You're sleeping, you're eating, you're going to work, you're walking around every bit of your ordinary life and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. And the words that stuck out to me was God helping you. God does not expect us to go it alone. He has said he will be there alongside us every step of the way. I guess during lockdown, we've had some worries, some doubts, some stresses, some anxiety. We we're stressed about all sorts of things. And we're stressed, will we be able to actually maintain our relationship with God? Or will we fall by the wayside? But all these things, in all these things, God knew best. He was there in the midst of our worries. He was there in the midst of our chaos. He was there directing our paths. He was there leading us. He was there encouraging us. He was leading us all in the right direction. And strangely enough, 13 weeks on, we've adapted. Don't think any of us have gone hungry or thirsty. I don't think any of us have, have not maintained some form of contact with people outside. We've found ways, particularly, of maintaining contact with our church family. And through it all, God has remained constant. He has been there. As a church, we've managed to find ways of supporting and encouraging one another. We have the church newsletter in touch. We have our service online on a Sunday. We have our Sunday school group. And we have our church WhatsApp group. And individuals contact each other to support and encourage one another. And I know these have been important spiritual lifelines throughout this time. Again, I am reminded what God, without God helping us, spurring us on, prompting individuals to take initiatives, these things would not have happened. So God is with us. It tells us in Philippians 4.13, we can do all things through Christ which strengthens us. So in Christ, we can do all things as long as he's alongside us. Isaiah 41.10 tells us, Fear not, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. 
I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. He will uphold us, no matter the situation, no matter the concern. We need to be reassured that God is definitely with us. Christians are part of the, of the body of Christ. We all have different functions. Some of us are strong, some not so strong. Some of us can sing. If anybody knows me, they'll know I cannot sing, although I'd love to be able to. Some of us can do this, some of us can do that. Some of us can play the piano. Again, I don't have that ability. But together, together, we are a community, a body of Christ that needs to, and when we come together, we fulfill the commission of telling others about God's love. Hebrews 10, 25 reminds us, we should not give up meeting together. And the passage from Romans reminds us that we are part of a body, of a community of, of God. Yet by the very nature of this pandemic, by the very nature of this quarantine, our community can no longer meet. And there is a danger that we will become fragmented, 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 and we can feel isolated. We know that it is God's intention and plan that we knit together in a community to help and enable us become the best we can for him. Community, like family, helps us to smooth out our rough edges. When we're out of order, there's always somebody there to tell us and bring us back in line. It gives us direction, it encourages us, it comforts us, it upholds us in times of disappointment and sadness. And it's joyous when we can share the things that God has done for us. Proverbs 27, 17 said, as iron sharpens iron, so one, another, one person sharpens another. In essence, we need one another. So we know that God is with us always and he encourages us to come together, to become part of a community, to belong. In this meeting together and God will be with us, he is able to show his love for us through the grace, generosity and love of others. God wants us to care, support and encourage each other. He understands that the need for such support and has given us each other to, in order for that to happen. Community is the way we can do great things. I have learned together, together we can do wonderful things for the kingdom of God, so much more than we could ever do on our own. Indeed, we are stronger together and we become more like Christ together than we do alone. So how in these strange times do we ensure we can maintain our sense of belonging to the body of Christ and our local community? And whilst, you know, living by government dictates and, and that two metre distance, um, how can we continue to undertake the work that God has for us as individuals and as a church? How can we contribute to our community and undertake what God wants us to do? So our commission is to tell others about the love of God. Our commission is to advance God's kingdom. Our commission is to encourage each other, to build each other up. And we must bear in mind, bear one another's burdens. This goes on despite the pandemic, pandemic. And this goes on because of the pandemic. Our sense of community, our sense of caring, our sense of comforting is indeed now more sharpened than it ever has been. Last week, Matthew reminded us that even though we don't physically meet, we are still a community. And as such, communities communicate with one another. And he encouraged us by whatever method to contact somebody and say, how are you doing? So how are you doing? We need to ensure that we stay in touch. We need to maintain our strong sense of community so we can pick one another up when we're down. We can comfort one another when we need to. We can encourage one another. We can spur one another on. We can celebrate and dance with joy in the things that God is doing for us. Last Sunday, Jill and I went for a walk along the river, two distance, sorry, two metres apart, not two distances apart. And during this walk, Jill turned to me and she said, I'm going mad. And I said, yes. And she said, no, I'm going mad. She said, I've got this book. I don't remember ordering it. I must have ordered it in my sleep. I must have got up in the night and ordered it in my sleep. It's got a horse in. Perhaps I was thinking of it for summer. We laughed. 
about her lockdown brain and carried on walking. And every now and then she'd go, no, I'm really going mad. I didn't order that book. I must have done it in my sleep. And when I got home, on my doorstep was a parcel from Amazon. And inside that parcel was a book. And it was the book that Jill had been talking about. The Boy, the Mole, the Fox and the Horse. It's a beautiful book. You may have heard of it. If you haven't read it, I you know, strongly suggest you get it. It will, it will make you smile, it will uplift you, it will encourage you. In that book, it's heartwarming, it's delightful. And lots of beautiful truths are found about kindness, encouragement and friendship. Well, why, whilst I was reading this book, and by the way, I know I didn't, I did not order that book. Um, but whilst I was reading it, I came across this advice given to the horse, given by the horse, sorry, to the boy. And he said, always remember, you matter, you're important and you are loved and you bring into the, this world nothing that anybody else can. And this little sentence was what stirred me to do this word. Romans 12, so since we find ourselves fashioned into all these excellently formed and marvellously functioned parts of Christ's body, let's just go ahead and be what we were made to be. So God has placed us, each and every one, where he wants us to be, in a community where we belong. Alongside this, he has a specific job that only we can do. Nobody else can do it. So we need to work out what it is that God wants us to do. I think the body metaphor is brilliant because it reveals what true belonging means. Each of us brings our full and real selves, our gifts, our doubts, our strengths, our brokenness, into a community, a body where difference is not merely tolerated or brushed aside, but is recognised as vital and necessary. The variety of the members in church contributes to its beauty. It develops unity and encourages diversity. It also ensures that the work of God is effective, enabling the church to spread the good news of God's love for each and every one of us. So in these extraordinary times when people are rethinking their lifestyles, rethinking their choices, rethinking their lives, when it is said more and more people are connecting online to churches, how are we using our talents and our abilities? in being present for the people in our community. How are we communicating with others? How are we opening our community arms and embracing those who need God's love? Going back to the book and the conversation between the boy and the horse, the horse points out that home isn't always a place. And indeed, ch church isn't a building. The church is the people. The church is the people who are there following Christ and doing God's work. We are his ambassadors here on earth. We need to contribute to the work of God. So how are we going to contribute to the work of God? How are we going to do what God has for us to do? Scripture tells us, whatsoever we do unto others, we do as unto Christ. So there's no resting of our laurels, no sitting in our pyjamas hour on hour watching TV. We have a job that only we can do, only you can do, only I can do. So let's go ahead and be what we were made to be. Oh, but you doubt yourself. You say, who am I? I'm, I'm, I'm insignificant. I have no task, talents. I have no abilities. I'm nervous. I've not got you no know, confidence. What, if anything, can I do? What we need to remember that in God's eyes, we are, you are precious, I am precious, we are precious, and we are unique. And he has a job only you or I can do. We can't do one another's job. Rick, Ro Rick Warren wrote, only you can be you. God designed each of us so that there is no duplication in this world. No one is the same as you. This means no one else on earth will ever be able to play the role that God planned for you. If you don't make your unique contribution to the body of Christ, it simply won't be made. 
So my question is, how are you making your unique contribution to the body of Christ, to your community? How are you using your talents, your skills, your abilities to do the work for God, especially in these very strange times? Of course, many of you will already be using your talents. You're probably doing shopping for uh, neighbours or simply spending time with neighbours, talking to them. I think Mark called it having a cup of tea over the bins. You may be sewing wash bags or scrubs for, for uh, nurses and doctors. You may be taking food to those who need it. You may be offering financial, practical, emotional or spiritual support. Or as Matthew said, just touching base and saying, how are you? I would urge you to keep doing all, all that work. That's really important. But I would also ask you, what is it that God, what unique job does God want you to do? What has he got specifically for you? And perhaps, perhaps you could just buddy up with somebody. Perhaps you could uh, have a, a friend who you speak to regularly, who you pray with over the phone, or you meet on a two metre distance walk and pray together, have a prayer walk. You could laugh together, you could cry together, you could support one another. But the best part is having fun working out how you're going to do it. Perhaps you're a prayer warrior. And perhaps God is saying, now is the time to seriously get on those knees. Now is the time to seriously lock yourself away and pray for this nation. Pray for our leaders. Pray that they will have wisdom. Pray that they will do the right thing before God. Pray for our global leaders. We have seen what's happened in America. Pray that God will speak directly into Trump's heart and mind. Pray that God will break through man's inhumanity towards man. Pray for those who wish to create more problems by violently protesting, looting and causing injury. Get on your knees and pray. And don't forget to pray for your neighbour. Don't forget to pray for those in need. But perhaps God's saying now is the time to be that real prayer warrior. Perhaps you have an amazing way with words. Perhaps you could write a letter, somebody brighten up their day. We all love to get letters popping through the, bar, the door. Perhaps you're... you're artistic perhaps you could draw a card or, or a drawing or perhaps you're good at photography perhaps you could take a photograph and, and pass it on perhaps you could make a bookmark perhaps you're an amazing baker perhaps you could bake those biscuits and drop them on somebody's doorstep perhaps you're an, an amazing listener perhaps you could pick the phone up and just talk to somebody or allow them to talk to you remember whatever we do we take god with us he is with us always. He will give us strength and wisdom to complete the task he wishes us to do. These are just some ideas to promote the kingdom of God where you are. And whatsoever you do unto anyone, you do it as unto Christ. But you know your talents, you know your abilities, you know what God wants you to do. I would just challenge you to do what it is that God wants you to do. I would challenge you to step out and do that work for God. But I'd like to do one more challenge before I go. In our everyday ordinary life, I would like you to do something extraordinary for one person. Could be two, it's up to you. But do something extraordinary without fanfare, but with genuine thought and love. Not making a big deal of it, just doing something for somebody that is out of the ordinary. Remember, community is the way we can do great things. Together, we can do wonderful things that we couldn't do alone. And although we are many, we are, when we are one, we are strong. Although we are many, when we are one, we are strong. So just to recap, God is constant. He's always there. We belong to a community. We belong to the body of Christ. We have a contribution to make and we have... We have a contribution to make and we do have a right to do this. We do have a duty to do it. Romans 12 reminds us that in fact God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. We are and are where we are meant to be. 
I will leave you with a few words from Bear Grylls. He said, so be loyal to your friends, especially when they're not with you. Be the kind of friend who makes the laughter last longer and the tears ease sooner. Encourage them by words and deeds, by the text, by the email. Build each other up. Be loyal to your friends. But my final word has to be a paraphrase from the book, The Boy, the Mole, the Fox and the Horse. The mole said to the boy, sometimes we may feel lost and alone, but now, but no, you are loved and that love will bring you home. Stay safe, stay well, God bless you all. Oh, and the secret book giver was...